Welcome back. You're listening to a very delicious episode of the Keep the Change podcast. We've got a very special guest in the studio today, Tama Singh. Mate, this has been a long time coming. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm a big time fan of your guys' stuff as well. Awesome. We love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So following you guys for, for a while and yeah, looking forward to getting on here and spreading value to you know everyone that of your listeners that want to do more with their lives and get some value. Wicked, that's what it's all about. Well, usually what I do with guests is I have a fairly good understanding of what they do, what they're about, uh, and even their story. But for you, for some reason, I specifically decided that I wasn't going to go do any research. I haven't listened to any podcasts, yeah. which I'll normally do to figure out, okay, can I speed up the story um, to then figure out how can we extract the most value for the audience. But I think something was different with this, and I thought, well, let's just go a little bit different and I think to start with do you want to just quickly tell people what it is that that you do um well I do property investing on the residential side and it's mainly flipping and then after I've done probably a year and a half of that I got to the point where I had enough experience behind me and I said I can now have the confidence to teach people this and there was obviously a lot of people asking me can how are you doing this how are you doing this and decided to do the coaching side. So now I'm a property investor who does flipping and also coaching. Wicked. So most people I reckon would think that property investing means get a rental property, hold on to it. But you're saying basically, no, that wasn't your avenue. Your avenue was buy these properties, add value to them and then sell them. Flipping? Yes, correct. So yep. you can obviously do both. Um, buy and hold is always the biggest wealth builder that mm. there is. But at the same time, there's a uh, good rule to look at it where you know every day we're aging um depending on who you're actually trying to look after if it's say your parents they're obviously a lot older than i am and a flipping strategy of cash coming up like now yeah. can give them better quality of life immediately rather than having a buy and hold strategy which will greatly benefit me and my you know partner and my daughter but you got to look after both sides of the family Wicked. So you're doing this not just for yourself but and your family, I mean your partner and your daughter, mm. uh, but for your parents as well. Is that what yeah, I'm picking up? Yeah, especially. Yeah. And most people would say, oh, well, buy and hold strategy will also look after them passively also. Mm. Um, but in today's day and age, it's, it's a weird conversation that like, you know, buy and hold is there to catch the capital gains. Yeah. And right now, if you don't believe there's going to be any super uplift in property prices, there's no real reason to buy a buy and hold right now because you just make sure you don't catch the upturn. And I think that's going to be after the election, which will be probably next year. Yeah. So I'm like, flip, 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 get as much cash as you can, and then you can just drop that on a buy and hold later on. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll get into some tactics later. But yeah. Instagram up in the background here, at Tama Singh, T-A-M-A-S-I-N-G-H. There's 14.3 thousand people checking out what you're doing, but it says here that you've done 46 property purchases and counting. Yeah, it's probably like two behind it being updated, so it'll be 48. Wow, you almost need like a live counter on the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, and that's yeah. in two years and two months. Wow, so where did the interest in property come from for you to do your first deal? Um, it, it came to just knowing the facts that 90% of all millionaires have come from property. So you've got the biggest net there. So if you're going to throw shit at the wall and see if it sticks, why not go for the biggest wall out there, Yeah. right? Who'd who, who planted the seed for you? Um, numerous other, um, like just, just basic reading books and attending any other seminar that might be held from a, a previous type coaching a company that might not exist anymore. Yeah. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a great one. You know, he's got his docker out on Netflix now and, yeah. I, and I, it always shocked me to know that he was a millionaire from property before he even got into movies. Wow. That to me was like, what? Yeah. How is that possible? And then I, I read how, how he did it and... Yeah, that, that to me was a, was a huge one. Cool. Yeah, he's got a phenomenal story where he basically found someone's blueprint and repeated that, right? Mm. Is it Reg Parker maybe? Is yeah, that, Reg Park. That's to get into the actual like yeah. um, Mr. Olympia and then go become Hollywood star, yeah. But I think it's a good reminder that even, you know, if someone as successful as him now, he's found somebody who he aspired to be like and has thought, right, I just need to repeat what they're doing and maybe I could make it to America or wherever. Exactly. Our fastest way for success is just copy someone. Mm. We'll pay yeah. them and just learn from them. Okay, so let's go back to your very first deal then. So where was it and how did it play out? So it was in Westport. 
So wow. I, what I did was, I was in living in Auckland. Yeah. And Westport was one of the cheapest places you can ever buy a house in New Zealand. Um, I'm not too sure, you saw the article I posted yesterday, Stuff did an article on a what they think was a million dollar house. And the catch was, it's actually 400,000 because it's in Westport. You pick that villa up and put it in Ponsonby, two million, easy, wow. right? That was the second house we ever, we ever did. It was so cool to see that... Um, you know, we renovated that, and there's a story behind that. But I'll get to that as well. But yeah, Westport, and it was 192,000, yeah. and it was a four bedroom house. Wow! So okay. I had four thousand dollars technically um, in cash, and I had to try and buy that. You had four K, yeah. and you had to buy a hundred ninety-two thousand dollars house. Correct. Before we get into how you did that, then, but you could see something in this house. You thought, okay, I can turn this into more than a hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, that's the whole principle of flipping, right? Absolutely. Take something, increase its value. Hopefully it doesn't cost as much as it does um, to do that as what you get from the sale. Yep. Take your profit, pay your tax on it, of course. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot you're an accountant. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, mate, yeah, mate. <laughs> pay the tax at some stage. We can, we can explore that yep. and then roll into the next one maybe. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so people will be saying, hang about, how can you buy a property for four grand? Well, how do you get a, uh, a deal across the line? You've only got 4K cash when it's 192K, therefore you've only really got about 2% of the purchasing price, how does that work? Correct, so, and this is also Westport where you, it's so remote, you can't even fly there directly. You have to fly to Nelson to get in the car, three hours drive to Westport, right? There's a few listeners in Westport too, so shout out to the listeners yeah, in Westport. Yeah, shout out to them, right? <laughs> yeah. I've been to, I've done five properties in Westport. Wow. Out of the 48, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, 192,000 just comes to basic math. If you're going to do a flip, you have to provide 40% deposit from the purchase price. So you just go 192, Thousand times 0.4 equals, and I think you're staring at 78,000. Yeah. So now you need 74,000. And then I said, okay, how am I going to get this just to buy it? Yeah. Then I'll figure out the reno costs after that. And this is what I sort of teach people is like, I called up members of the family, and I had this is the thing you have to have a clear plan of how this won't fail. So mm -hmm. they know if I'm going to give you any amount of money. And one rule I always say at my seminars is everyone knows someone with money. They just won't give it to you because you aren't an expert in this field yet. So you, you learn. And so I asked my mum, she had 20 grand cash liquid. And then I said, I need you to take out a personal loan in your name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay for all the repayments for that. So she got out, I think, 35 grand very fast. So now we're sitting at 55. Then I'm, obviously you leverage, because I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman as well before I did some of this. Yeah. And it's a Jones's theory, right? People do when someone else does something else and mm -hmm. they want to get in on it. So, hey, dad, um, divorced, both yeah. of them. So I said, mom's given me some money. Are you? Obviously there's a bit, bit more of a pitch there, yeah. but then he came to the party and I think he gave me like 12K cash liquid as well. And then um, I think I asked my other sibling, and they gave me the rest. And we literally just scraped together 78,000. Then we purchased it. And then we was now, how the hell are you going to add value to this with no money whatsoever? So the bank financed the other 60%, portion? 60%, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. this is like second tier lenders. And a lot of people don't know this. It's like that, that you only need like, you know, the 40% of the loan um, of the deposit and the second tier lenders, they just care about your exit strategy. What is the exit strategy? We want the money back within six months is what they normally give. And if yeah. you say, I'm going to buy it, renovate and sell it, they're going to be like, okay, cool. They don't really look into your financials. They don't really look into your spending. They don't really go into that whole like, oh, you spend X, Y, Z at Starbucks and yeah. the vape store and the show show and whatever. They're just like, if you're going to sell it, you owe some money in six months. And there's a little bit of things that happen after that, but that's how easy it is. And I had to do this with no trading history. My company was started two weeks before I went and did this loan. So they're like, this company's been incorporated for two weeks. Yeah. This guy has never flipped a property in his life. So then that comes down to like the type of broker you use to paint the story. Because remember, these guys aren't AI robots yet. Mm. They are human beings and they do appreciate a good story and a well-structured email. Yeah, so that's where your selling and sales background probably helped you to craft Absolutely. your story. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. that's why like, at the seminars, it's not just the property stuff, it's negotiation skills is what I mainly push yeah. because that's the thing that's my greatest strength because yeah. it's not maths, it's not school, it's not uni. I never went to uni. Yeah. It's just the shit that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. must be able to figure out the mathematics of a deal though to know, okay, this Well, that's should. just like, can you type in the price on a calculator and go times 0. 0.4? 
Yeah. But if you can't do that, properties, start properties are not for you, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you buy this first property. How yeah. are you feeling at this stage? Um, well, I, it was sight unseen, so I didn't even see it. Wow. So I had to trust the words of like um, other other tradies that went and did like a video call or photos. The agent, knowing that she's bound by REA to disclose everything that might need to be disclosed and doing the comparable sales where it's like, is there a four bedroom available under 400 grand? And there wasn't. So yeah. I knew every four bedroom, once it's livable, renovated, has to sell over 400 just because supply and demand. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that was my my spread. So I went 192 to 400 plus. So there's a $200,000 spread there. Yeah. Now your main goal here is to fit the renos in the middle. That's your profit. So if you, you're going 80 grand, then your, your margin looks like around a hundred after fees. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. So you, so then how did you finance the repairs of it or the renovations, the improvement? So this is another thing I discussed the, all these little tips and tricks, which is a good one is that obviously credit cards, Yep. So this is the thing. When you're sure on the profit, when yeah. you're absolutely sure on the profit, it doesn't really matter how you get the money besides theft yeah. right? and fraud. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and um, so credit cards, 10 grand personal one, use that to fly down there, mm -hmm. rental car, accommodation, that blew like four grand immediately. And then it's like painting, paint supplies and stuff. And then you realize like you can open up a credit account at say Mitre 10, and they can offer you 30 days, 60 days, 90 day terms. So you're actually buying all the materials up front and you're not paying for any of it until mm. the 30 days. Yeah. And then it comes down to how well you are as a person, rapport building, to talk to maybe the actual owner. These are independently owned um, stores. They're like pack and saves. Yeah. So they're not corporate. So you can get to know the actual owner. When we went in there, boxes of bears for the trades manager, and then eventually we're not paying for bills for 60 days. Wow. And now, and we, so we were like, we need to sell this house so we can pay them back. Another thing that helps is that a lot of the deliveries that they were doing with all the building materials, the Gerb, Scotia, their trade manager was seeing the house transformed in front of his eyes and appreciated what we were doing. And so when we gave the call, like, hey, we might be a little bit late on payments, um, they were like, all good. Now, yeah. this obviously isn't a guaranteed definite thing that I say that you guys should just not pay your bills on time. Yeah. Um, it comes down to rapport building. And also, um, we were chipping away at it as it came. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, any any other person that you can get invested money from, you, you, you do that. Yeah. Okay. So you're ideally trying to find some extra funds as well to help clear some of your bills. Correct. But on the early days, effectively, you're relying on as many lines of credit as you can. Yeah, to get started. To get you started, to then get to that, hopefully. So did you do the repairs and renovations and improvement yourself? No. So I do have a very good business partner who's my main builder. Yeah, is this even at Property One? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We started everything since Property One and yeah. even before that. So before this, I did project management for some other multimillionaire person that eventually screwed me over yeah. and didn't pay me on certain things. And then um, that's why I thought I'd have more money to go into this. But yeah. because he didn't pay me, it was like I had like four grand in my account and we were doing work for him. And then eventually we got to the point where I said to my builder, I was like, we should just do this by ourselves now. And he's like, okay, how? Yeah, it was the moment. We we're like, okay, yeah. let's do it. So companies register, registered, Asgard Investments Limited. Yeah. But pull that out of Marvel as a huge fan, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we went to work on it. And obviously wow. whatever money he had, which was bugger all as well, um, that also helped in his experience there dealing with Mitre Tens and other regions. Yeah. And we were like, he's from Bay of Plenty and I'm from Auckland. And our first flip obviously was Westport. Shit. Then our second purchase was Westport. The yeah. third one was nowhere near Westport. And I went, this is the thing that's crazy. I don't tell anyone to do this, but there were deals so good that I was going unconditional on without finance lined up. Yeah. Like wow. it, because the point where we've got, we've pushed ourselves in such stressful situations that it's forced us to learn things that we would never have learned if we were just chilling, chilling. Like yeah. I was telling this to one of my mentees as well. I was like, trying to convince their JV partner to do something with him. And I said, hey, I'll be here helping. And I said, 48 properties in two years. Imagine if you did 17. Imagine if you did 17 properties in two years. Mm. Do you know how much that'd be? Like how much renovations and tradies you'd talk to and lawyers and emails yeah. and things you'd learn? Imagine if you did 35. Imagine if you did 40. 
Now imagine you're crossing 50. Like that's the experience that I have. Yeah. You know, like when I tell people. But um, So you must have been, by this stage, to fast forward to now, you must be fucking working around the clock to get, th- th- there's so much going on there in terms of like lawyers, finance, trading, yeah. project management. Yeah. And yeah. this, is the, this is the other craziest thing about this, that I don't talk about this at all and no one really knows about this, even you probably. But yeah. I also still work full time. You're joking. Nope, 40 hours a week, mate. Wow. This is the crazy shit. You yeah. get the most exclusive, because yeah. I've never really said this. No one ever on my Instagram would have ever seen a post about me working full time. Yeah, wow. Ever. Yeah. I did notice that a lot of your content comes out after... At, after five o'clock, yeah. right? Yep, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I picked up on that. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Uh, my man's not cranking content throughout the day. Where's the like update of what yeah, he's up to? Yeah, I know. And that okay. has always been one of the things that handbrakes but it has helped with servicing on the on the flips and, and having the, that income come in. Yeah. And normally I don't say that. Even in my seminars, I don't really disclose it that much unless people yeah. really ask because it's like, well, it's two reasons why. People will go to instantly, their brain would go, A, he's either not making as much money as he yep. says he does because why would he still be working? Mm-hmm. Or B, which should be taken as the main point is, oh, wow, he does all of this and he still works full time how that's motivating how do i find the way to just do two a year it's, it's interesting because that's where my brain went i was thinking fuck you've just smashed a whole heap of people's um objections that oh well i'd never be able to do that much in in that short period of time yep. but really you're doing this on top of your work so Correct. you can do it in your evenings weekends etc yep. it is um uh, like a sales role so you have those options times during the day when you're driving and you can make phone calls and no yep. allocated lunch break and you're not like behind a checkout at Countdown, serving customers yeah, like yeah. I did when I was 15 yeah. and until 20 and like all that backstory. But I know I understand the difference there. But at the same time, I have done certain videos and I teach the efficiency of if someone was an actual checkout operator, how they could do it. Because okay. to me, that's like you have no time to do anything. You're literally like holding the broccoli, scanning yeah. the onion <laughs> bag, beep, 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 when's your break? Half an hour? My teaching would be like, figure it out in this half an hour and I can teach you how to do that. Yeah. But even if people could pull off two or three a year for some extra funds. To a lot of people, just one. And that is why I, my, my seminar is based around one like main sentence. Learn how to make 30 to 50 grand. Yeah, That's it. I ain't teaching them how to become multimillionaire or, any, or developer or anything like that. I just know that if today's economy, how you guys speak, if someone just lump sums you 30 grand, that'll probably solve all your problems to do with like interest rates rising, grocery costs, fuel costs, yeah. that lump sum 30, that to a lot of listeners, that'll that'll solve their problems. It will until it's gone, but what you're teaching them is how to do it again and again and again Correct. and again. Correct, that's the skill, because that's the shit that makes you um, Unstoppable. invincible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you so much, you don't have to rely on your employment. They yeah. could just fire you and all your skills are gone. But it can also open your eyes to, wow, okay, what else is possible? Yeah. Right, because you're yeah you're you're learning something. Okay, so that property one, just to dial back, mm. it, what did it sell for? Four hundred and one thousand. So, nope. So this is the craziest shit. As I said, things change. Yeah. We were in Westport, then we bought our second one in Westport, and uh, so it was April. Second one we bought in May. Third one we bought in May. So the next two were like no finance. Eventually, then June, July, biggest floods in Westport's history strikes in 2021. Shit. Remember this one? All over the news. One in a hundred. Yeah. One in a century, they were calling it. The house that we renovated, house number one, literally um, photos of the next day, which means it's carpets, brand, everything's done because your photos is yeah. tomorrow. That night, Saturday night, flood waters up to your hip throughout the entire house. Fuck. The whole house flooded. How's as your with, feeling? As with that? thousands of other houses, right? Yeah. And so I was like... Um, I was like, haha, that's funny, but I guess that's why we've got insurance, right? Double check insurance is in play, and we have to make sure that, okay, if we are on a timeline, understand there's gonna be thousands of people that are gonna be claiming, we need to get in there first. So we need to just hound the phone, call, email, make sure there's access, because insurance assessors need to come and physically put eyes on the building, yeah. and they start quantifying on what it costs to replace that. And then eventually we got a large insurance payout, and we ended up renovating it back to normal, did everything we needed to do to get the yellow sticker off, and we sold it for 375 
Wow. But now this is because of the market stigma of Westport having a previously flooded house. Even though it's fixed, stigma is one of the unchangeables, right? Yeah. Someone dies in the house, you cannot change that. You can't go back in time. Yeah. If it was a meth house, surely you can reline the walls, insulation, clean it. Still the stigma's there. So 375 we uh, with the insurance power to... Plus it, we still made over like 70 grand from that. Sweet. Is yeah. that a good feeling when you pulled the deal off? Like Abs- when it was Absolutely, done? Yeah. yeah. And to see the before and after photos, it, it was it's, it's awesome, nice little house. Yeah, yeah. work it. So yeah. you, by then you've already started on build number or flip number two, three, et yeah. cetera. So, so house kinda... number two was that villa I posted the other day. Yeah. Where we bought it for 120 grand. Yeah. And it was a massive villa. Mm. And the renovation blew out of the water yeah. uh, to $210,000. And then we sold that for literally the same 375k price. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we made about 40, I think, on that bug roll. But as the um, renovations were, and heaps of things I also teach and talk about is like the small meta things that happen that if you're in this for the long run and you're thinking about the future, when shit starts hitting the fan with the renos, and I always told my, my, my builder, I was like, look, Let's just make sure this house is mint. I know the fucking budget's out the water, but one thing that we will always have are these photos, yeah. the after photos, the before and after. We can leverage this to show other investors. We can leverage this to show other people, social media, to get more followers. We can always leverage the before and after because that's where the win is. And then a year and a half later, it's in stuff yeah. article, oh. you know? Yeah. And to the point where obviously a smart marketer would be like, instantly send her that. Mm. I sent her that, hey, here are the before and afters. And she's like, what? Holy shit. And I was like, yeah, we've also flipped 48 since then. Do you want to do a story on me? She's like, yep, 100%. Far out, well done. So like jump on any exposure you get if you're trying to marketize yourself. Yeah, (laughs) marketize, good stuff. Oh, that's outstanding. So, okay, so you, you succeed with the first one effectively and then you're basically taking profits and rolling it into... Correct, you, you, but at this time, now. another point is if you're going to become a property investor, um, well, basically anything that you're really proud of, you never be quiet about it. Yeah. You tell everyone you know. And because... Um, I do videos on that as well. It's like I tell every single person I'm a property investor because, as I said, everyone knows someone with money. Mm. And, like, they're eventually they want to see the social proof. And then once you have the social proof, even one, then you then people just start coming out of nowhere. Yeah. You're, you're active. You're looking at the investor page on Facebook. You're looking at people that are in the property-related thing, you know. You're, 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 you're looking between the memes you're scrolling at and, oh, this guy's talking about property. I'll watch this. And then I'll go back to memes. Yeah. And then I might send him a DM like, hey, man, I'm sitting on this. Uh, what do you think I could do with this? I've got X amount of cash in my account. What would you do if I invested that? And then now you start getting other people's money. So yeah. other people's money is the sure slingshot to get you from a to, a to Z. And people might be like, oh, that's, that's, the sh- that's how you did it. It's, it's other people's money. So of course it was. Yeah, yeah. Same it's as like, people. You think I'm out there the building the road? No, I just drive on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, like that's the shortcut. But they will not give you the money if you didn't do the work. Mm. If you didn't structure yourself to be an expert in your field and come across confident and answer every single question they ask yeah. without hesitation, which is the thing I teach people at the seminars. I'm like, you go and talk to your family, and they will say. Get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely they will. And they should. And one of the things I always tell people is get the no out of the way ASAP, especially for a lot of people that have their parents sitting on equity, mm. dead equity, and they go, oh, I don't know, my parents didn't do it for my brother, they didn't do it for my sister, so why would they do it for me? And it's like, well, do you think that you have the skills, knowledge, and energy to make enough money for everyone? Because that's the that's the power of property. They yeah. can make fucking millionaires. Mm. They'll here, mum and dad. Here's your hundred k back. Here, sister, brother. Here's 40, 50 grand in the next two or three years. And the parents will be like, "We're happy we gave it to you because you thought of your siblings, so we will do this." And blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as it snowballed for you, what you're saying is that basically people started to take notice, but you're also pushing the other way, saying, "Hey, look at what I'm doing." And other people were saying, "Well, how do I get in on this?" And they Correct. were willing to then the money started coming faster. Absolutely. And are they wanting a piece of the pie as you go effectively or yeah, what? Yeah, of course. Yeah. No one will just give you the money for free. And if it is, yeah. it's probably family. Yeah, yeah. And, and even then you 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 definitely give them something back. Yeah. Right? I think, um, you know, if some people, this will be very foreign to them and they'll be thinking, fucking hell, like this, you're making it sound very easy. But, you know, I've got, I've had the same conversation today with a client who's got a business and they want to execute a strategy over the next 12 months and they're basically like, we need to go find X, Y, Z amount of money. 
And there's a few different ways they can do it. But I said, honestly, like when you start looking for it, you will be surprised that that's actually not a big amount of money and it will show up and you will be blown away who may be able to help you. And I said, don't worry about the how you're going to do this, worry about who. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll go do five emails and knock on emails, LinkedIn's, et cetera, yep. for you, see if I can shake the tree. And I'm like, you go do five as well and let's see where we get to from that. Equally, I've got uh, exposure to clients who are in property and basically, you know, they'll start with the bank and whatnot or they might start with family and it is um, bigger, bigger scale developments. But same thing, eventually they're like, fuck, we want to build a fund. Um, we need to find people that have got, you know, a million dollars to tip yep. in, et cetera. And, you know, fast forward 12 months, 24 months, they've met that person and that person's gone, yep, I trust what you're doing here. I will put some money in. Oh, by the way, you should talk to my friend, such and such, because these people hang around similar types of people, right? Correct, yeah. And then the snowball really does start to go down the mountain quite quick. So yeah. I think there'll be people listening thinking, shit, I couldn't do that. I don't know those people. Uh, or are oh, you making this seem like, you know, it's, it's too simple, but... You have to start looking for it, right? And yep. then the universe almost starts bringing it back towards you. Yep, absolutely. And mm-hmm. like as much as manifestation is there, you know, you still got to actually do, do the, the action, work. send yeah. the message, get on the phone, um, go see them in person, not just, you know, call your parents up, ask for money. Maybe you, you actually, you know, genuinely plan it. And as I said, get the no's out of the way as soon as possible for anyone you're thinking that might be able to give you money or equity, because yeah. chances are no one says yes on the first pop. They're yeah. going to go back, sit, sit around, think about it. They might keep an eye on your social medias or what you're, you're up to, or they might um, uh, you know, hear word of mouth of what you've been doing. And then two months down the track, they might ask a question, a specific question. And yeah. that's when you're like, okay, there's the opening. Yeah. But you get the no out of the way ASAP because you expect it. You yeah. go and ask your parents for, hey, can you leverage 150 grand equity so I can use it as a deposit, blah, 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 blah. Find out, no. And then over dinner, you ask them a little bit like why and you take down the objections. And yeah. so next time you need to like handle those objections with by X, Y, Z, this is what will happen. They go, oh, okay, three months later, six months later. And because I had to do this, I like before I had to go and ask my dad for a signature on something um, when I bought my first buy and hold years ago, we had like one of the biggest fights in, in the history of the world. Yeah. Like, like massive. And then four days later, I'm there being like, oh, yeah, by the way, dad, we need to buy this house. We need to leverage our house in Auckland. Like, the, 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 this, you know? Yeah. So I've been through all that shit. And yeah. so that's why I'm saying get the no out of the way as soon as possible. And then. I've- it opens doors. I've had a mate who said the exact same thing and he's like, oh, I'm just worried that I'm going to upset everything in my family. Um, if they fuck it up. Well, no, more like even just having the conversation around, hey, we could be doing more with this equity we've got across these properties. Yeah, no, nah, totally wrong. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. It's like, hey, um, well, it depends. If they're multimillionaires and they're not stressing about money, it's like, well, I guess. Mm. But if they're also like talking about interest rates rising and stressing out about – or just general conversation about shit rising, yeah. that comes from someone that's keeping an eye on their bank account and their wallets. Yeah. That's why they talk about it. So then you're going to be like, well, yeah, actually, we could do a flip. Let's just not get greedy. Let's try and make 50 grand. And then we just biff that towards the account, the stress account. Yeah. And the stress account's labeled mortgages, food. And- so how many into this 48 deals did it take for you to go, like, say to yourself, like, Tama, fuck, I know what I'm doing here. This is fucking mean. Like, let's roll faster. I think it was, like, like 12, okay. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then when I started learning the contemporaneous ones, that's when yeah. shit's like, oh, here comes the steroids. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't even know what that means, so we'll yeah, get to that. Yeah, let's yeah. hold that. But that's... It, uh, the reason I asked that is because it, it took you 25% of your deals to really have that confidence of, fuck, yeah. And I think it's a good thing for people to realize that it doesn't just take one win or two or three, et cetera, for someone to really understand, geez, I, I really know what I'm doing here and I've like got full confidence in myself and you have to earn that. Absolutely. And I literally had no one else there. To mm. teach continuous teaching and support, it was self-taught right there, and then just doing things with my business partner. And then now, when I have like certain students and mentees and people from my seminar, I'm telling them, screaming the shit 
at my seminar, you guys have the biggest cheat code ever. Me, leverage me. I will get in the room with your parents. I will call anyone you want, and and because I love that shit. Yeah. I used to, like and when I was doing my mentee in uh, Napier, just gone by. He brought his friend who's there, closed mind. You know, he's um scarcity mindset. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about this, 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 this. And I start telling him like, bro, imagine you do 17, 35, 50. Yeah. The experience I have, and I said you're worried about this, right? Yeah. And I just start throwing the worries at him before he even asks. Yeah. Because I just know how people think, and I'm like, imagine this, 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 or this. Anyway. Confident, he leaves, but an hour later, he's calling him, being like, I'm coming back at six. Can I meet the guy again? Really? Uh, yeah, that's just how it works. Yeah. And he brought two of his other friends that wanted to do some investments. Wow. Yeah. And you just have to be there and I'll just destroy anyone's excuses. <laughs> so I've got here, like, why? Like, why do you want to do this? So but I feel like I've picked up that one, it's for family um, yep. and for building wealth and for creating some cash, um, but also maybe like, why, why can't I do this on my own compared to your yeah. last venture or job, right? Yeah, well, you know, I'm also fueled by competition. Yeah. Yeah, hugely on competition. So I know who else is out there. And okay. I know what they're doing and they probably know what I'm doing. And we've had clashes beforehand that's happened. Yeah. Um, and like exclusions and kicked out of groups for doing my seminars. Wow. So that's the latest thing that's happened since January, my first seminar. Then yeah. I did February, second seminar. Then I did May, third. And then I, I will have another one very soon. But they didn't like that. And so I was part of their coaching program. And then they kicked me out. And what's that? Is that uh, stop reteaching what we're teaching you? or is Sort that of. A- it's like, uh, I don't know, you're going to go into these type of seminars. I feel like you might be eating into my market. Got you. So can't really have you there. And I totally understood that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was very expensive. Yeah, and then to be kicked out with not the support. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do my own coaching now, and that's why I said in my video, the top left video there, I'm there in the room screaming at everyone watching me. I'm like, I will do a better coaching program for property than anyone in this country. Yeah. I will fly to wherever you are. I will do it in person. You bring your dad, your mom, your cousin, your dog. I don't care. And we're gonna go through in four months. I can almost guarantee, but can't. You will just do a flip. In those four months. Wow. Because people do the coaching and then they're like, oh, sweet, it'll be a year or two years of support. And it's like, you pay me to make money. Mm. That's it. I don't need to be your friend. I've got enough friends to say anything but fucking business. Yeah. Pay me and I will teach you the skills to do this. And after four months, you've done your flip. Hopefully, you've learned enough and you're gone. But that's like a marketing spiel. Mm. Everyone that I've done a mentorship with, get on so well with them. I'm like, cool, let's just do more stuff. Yeah, and yeah. now I've got this huge amount of people now that are just like my bankroll coming in to do JVs with if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, fueled on competition. Yeah. So you've got a full-time role, you're doing your own flips, you're also then running seminars and mm. then you're doing one-on-one stuff with, let's say less than uh, double digits where you're one-on-one with them helping them do their first flip. Yeah. And you've got a daughter. Yeah. And an and unhappy wife. Uh, no, no, <laughs> happy. Yep. Yeah, good man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, the other thing is uh, Zoe, my daughter, she's two years, three months. We've been we've been flipping the entire time. Yeah, so nice. the moment she was born in February, it was like March, April, boom, company started, first flip starts. Yeah. So everything we had to do was during that tough newborn stage um, for the benefit of where we're sort of at now. And yeah. then still now it's like another level where it's like doing the coachings and the mentorships, which is taking time away. And then I'm going to be like, well, you know, if I didn't do this in April two, two years ago, we'd be pretty fucked now. We'd be in the conversation with, oh, gas prices are rising and food yeah. is so expensive and daycare's gone up and all this shit, right? Couldn't even um, entertain the, the topic of a second kid because yeah. of money of the stuff that money holds people back. So I'm like, well, we don't really have to worry about that. Mm. So if we keep this up, what is the next shit that's going to hit New Zealand or whatever yeah. that we won't have to worry about in two years' time? The upgrade of a house or the vehicles or whatever it is, you know? It's funny because I was speaking to a client yesterday and he's very competitive. He grinds hard. He loves it. And he said the same thing. He's like, fuck, man, I'm just going harder so that next year when it, when it happens, whatever it is, that everyone's like, oh, he's fuck, thinking the nukes happened. are going to drop <laughs> from Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, oh, I'll still be like, oh, well, thank fuck I did all of that last year because, you know, like, exactly. what, what are people going to worry about next year? I don't want to have to worry about it. So I might as well just carry on now. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a different type of mindset, right? So 
what's then the goal, like longer term? So it sounds like then we've got a bit of chip on the shoulder too of like, I'll show you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. My, yeah. my goal is to become like the most popular property coach in New Zealand. Well, and like best, being the best is like, I think comes down to like experience. And like, I've only been doing this for two years, four months, right? Mm-hmm. Or whenever April was. Um, so the experience is limited by that time. But you look at the quantity of deals, we've done what some people would take 10 years to do. And just because of how fast and compact we've done and the strategies we've learned, and that's the goal, to become the most popular property coach in New Zealand. How important has it been along that time to build a team, you know, builders, subbies, et cetera, et cetera? Very can, important. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. obviously that's linked to like you have to have the social media presence of mm-hmm. how you can be the most popular. That's the biggest way you get reach, right? Yeah. But then it's like um, every media outlet I'm after. So then the tradies find out what you do the guy who's actually paying them, like they find my Instagram, they find my Facebook, like yeah. the, 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 the painter from um, Wanganui or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then they start asking me like, hey bro, how much do you think I'd need for like a house deposit? And I'm just like, sweet man, I'm here to help, all good, you yeah. know? And do you help them or do you push them to the seminar? Um, Bit of both. Is it? No, they got to be working on that day. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit of both at the yeah. moment, if the time's there. I mean, the... Um, the next seminar will be in August, and right now there's a bit of time for them to plan for that. Yeah, yeah, and I do, I do know that for them, it's it's just limited by say they just want to buy or own occupy. I That's see. all they want to do, right? Yeah. Just get into their first house. Some of them might be like, yeah, I want to start doing investments, and I just said, look, at the moment, um, I can just provide you a lot of work. Because, again, they're like, sweet, that will help me as well. Mm. So that's what I can promise him for now. Um, yeah, but it's just funny because a side thing but also linked to this is you're on Instagram or social media and you're talking about the money you're making. We did this flip, we made this much. And a lot of people will keep the raw numbers off that. And it's a double-edged sword because you're trying to do it to also instill confidence in people like, look, we know what we're doing. We're making this amount of money. But at the same time, you've got people that are actually working with you or following you, seeing you post this shit too, yeah. right? So if you're posting this shit, you cannot be late on any invoices to your tradies. Yeah. <laughs> there is absolutely no way you're not paying bills because you're fucking screaming it. And I do one of the things that I talk to my other business partners and other people where I post the screenshots of the fucking money coming into my account yeah. on settlement days and stuff. That's like no one does that. Yeah. And I'm just like, I've always been that Got that kid back in the day when someone's talking about making money, I'm like, show me the money. Mm. Where is that money? Or is it just the words? And I try and be that one person that's like, well, fuck, I'll show a little bit now and then yeah. to motivate people, you know? Yeah, just don't that. tag IRD, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you have to be careful because I'd imagine that eventually you'll you'll piss somebody off and it probably already happens where they'll be like, right, influence or influencer slash someone influential talking about this stuff, quick call to the IRD to sort of, you know, tall poppy type shit. Yep. But obviously you've got everything in check on that side. I'm sure you do. Yeah, uh, oh, if IRD calls me, I'll be like, hey man, you want to get into property? I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> get them in on the next deal. Absolutely. They got some funds. Okay, so popularity, so Instagram. But did you have a bit of a following to leverage to start with? Yes, so this is another thing, right? So the backstory of where that all started five years ago, six years ago, is I did comedy skits. Mm. Like in New Zealand, I was vlogging. Prided myself on like being the only vlogger in New Zealand that vlogged every single day. This is back in the days where it was popping off with the Paul Brothers and everyone else from YouTube in America. And we did comedy skits. And pride ourselves that we did some of the funniest, best comedy skits back then. And a lot of people that come to my socials, they, they recognize me from that type of stuff, right? And that was learning to, you know, uh, present yourself on camera, acting, retakes, even the editing, the software, all that stuff that has now helped me monetize into the property game. But most importantly, if you're going to build your brand, it is how you present yourself in today's day and age on camera. Nice. Which is the training that I did with hundreds of videos, hundreds of you know, like vlogs, editing, the process of it, the work ethic that went into that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think people don't realize how much time and effort that takes. And I could tell through watching some of your content on socials, it's like, shit, there's a, uh, yeah, it's very natural for you. So there's obviously thousands of reps prior Correct. to this for that, yeah. but that's then going to help that popularity piece as well. Right. Mm. Um, how do you balance? Cause I'd imagine there'll be people that come to your seminars 
that then go away, like they've paid to be there, I'd imagine, mm. but they don't actually take any action. That's just what humans do, right? They're yep. like, fuck, yeah, got all the information. They're jazzed up for 48 hours, if that, and yep. then they're like, ah, oh, fuck, this feels too hard, and they don't, they don't end up doing it. How do you balance sort of the, um, right, people are paying to be here, but then knowing that they won't actually get to the start line of their first deal? So that's like just... Um, in individual people, like I'm like, there was something that got you guys to pay to come to the seminar in the first place. And then you have to break down into their mindset, what's your why? And then I do yell and scream and swear my ass off at my seminars. You have no idea, I go hard, yeah. you know? And I break it down and I, I always say, this is just the method of how to do it and I give them all the tools so it's not a guessing game now. It isn't like, yeah, man, I'm fucking motivated but I don't actually know what to do and yeah. press things on my laptop and keyboard and how to look at things. Like I go through where my eyes are looking on the screen, I click here, I type this out, I download this software and then I, I can make money just by doing that. And it's breaking down to people like, the support afterwards as well, um, the motivation of what other students did too, relating it to being like, ah, oh, fuck, if, if, that, if that person that doesn't even have a deposit for a house and then I post about like he made 25 grand after coming from my seminar, mm. he found three deals and he sold them all through me and I clipped him a fee and 25 grand and now he's sending me links being like, I'm going to buy this house, I'm going to buy this house and I'm like, that's awesome. Since wow. January. So – this person's finding deals for you slash your community. Yeah, so it's breaking down the 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 excuse of them. You're like, I'll come to a seminar, but still, man, I need to find that forty percent. I don't. I'm not ready to buy yet, so it's sort of a waste of time. It's like, nah, this is like alien training. You're an mm -hmm. illegal immigrant in New Zealand. You have no I, no money whatsoever, but you can still make money from my seminar because I teach the deal sourcing. And the main sentence there is: there's very rich, lazy people out there that'll just pay you for doing the work yeah. for them. But instead of doing it where it's labor of something per hourly rate, it's just a big lump sum $10,000 thing at the end of the line. If you find me this and here's your checklist, go. Wow. And here's like the two days or whatever it was to learn that. Yeah, one of the things that I saw that was really cool was that I think someone had come to a webinar, oh sorry, a seminar, and they'd gone away and they had basically, they weren't in a position to be able to, to do their own property flip, but they'd gone away and earned extra cash and to get themselves in a position to do that. And it might've taken them some time, but then you have people saying, oh, I don't have any money, so like, fuck this, this is full of shit. Like, yep. easy if you've got money, money makes money, all of those things that we use as excuses not to then take any action. Yep. But you were basically saying, well, look at this person. Like, they didn't have any money either. But then they realized, well, goal is 25 grand, say, I just need to try and stack that and then I can go to yeah. that next level, which I think that's great teaching for people to understand. Absolutely. And then you have to find out what gets people fired up. You know, mm. like if it's like competition, it's like that, or is it the self-belief? It's like, well, where's a lazy idiot I can pull up on stage and be like, look at him, he made money. Yeah. Like here's a lazy idiot. Do I if I call you that? No, that's not how I do it. But, you <laughs> yeah. know, like people need to get that relatability without like, fuck, if, he, if that person has yeah. done it, what's stopping me? Yeah. And then you break down the whole point, which I don't even talk about with is the, the working full-time balance. Mm. But then I go over the efficiency, the, the way that you actually are supposed to um, find the deals, get them under contract, and then all of the other stuff, the admin that comes behind it. And then there's new products that we're, we're thinking of doing. Like a video, my next video will probably be around like, where people shit themselves in property, where it's like they just get too scared to do something because the sale and purchase is in front of them now and they don't want to sign or they're like, oh, I need to consult um, other members of my yeah, family yeah. or my gene line. And like that's probably the next one where I'll be like, this is actually what happens when you sign this. Yeah. And yeah. Just, the self-belief, yeah. And an unfamiliarity and lack of courage, right? Correct. Because they're like, whoa, this is real now. And now it's actually on me. Like if I sign this piece of paper, then I've got some skin in the game, Correct. responsibility, and I need to make this shit happen. Yeah. And if I can't, then it's going to potentially obliterate Ruin my family. Yeah. yeah. Obliterate their finances, their family, their own self-belief, et cetera. So it's pretty scary. 100%. Yeah. All right, mate. I feel like uh, we've had a pretty good deep dive into – what it is that you do, uh, who you are, mm. why you're doing this, potentially what the, the goal is, um, and a better understanding of the fact that, that this is possible and possible 
in after hours time as well. Absolutely. So, We'll get to a part two, mate, because I think there's plenty more that we can dive into and we can get into some of the tactical stuff that I'm sure people want to know. Uh, but what has been the most rewarding part of this journey for you over the last two years? Um, basically, just knowing that the shit that we had to go through at the start, like we had to do the renos through COVID. We had the team that like literally were down there August 17th like day one in Westport, opens the door, Cindy's there on the news, lockdown's happening, all you guys need to get out of this motel, spend another two grand, three grand on flights, go back home, um, break-ins, I did the video, the guy broke in, freshly done house, took shit on the ground, smeared all over the walls, like tools stolen, um, then we had to do the, like, uh, what was the other thing? Some other crazy stuff that we've just been pushing shit uphill from the very start. Yeah. And then now to the point where it's like, it's paid off because I always thought, and I never really thought I'd go into the coaching side. I just mm. thought we'd flip till we made enough money. Then we became like the developments, yeah, which is where like huge money is. But then now it's like, well, the actual best thing, which combines both is the personal brand backed up from the stuff that we're doing. So, and obviously the money is good. Yeah. Like let's not, you know, you just fucking abuse the shit out of a pay wave. You just tap shit. You don't even look at the screen anymore. Yeah. It was like, here, yeah, tap, tap, tap. Uber Eats bill out the, out the wazoo, like just dumb shit, you know? Yeah. That's, the, that's also cool. You can't, like at the seminar, they break it down to people. Like actually envision what you would do if you had $300 worth of disposable income a day. Mm. The shit you'd do, the ex like the stuff you would do, crazy. You yeah. have no idea. People think that's not that much. It's like, trust me, that's all you need. $300 <laughs> of disposable income a day written off company or whatever you're, yep. you're feeling that man convenience is the key mm. anything you want get on the piss with your mates it's like wait i'll uber you here uber you back doesn't matter yeah. get your ass here whatever food drinks you know that's that's just the other side of it and you have to paint that picture to people's mind it's like do you like money like do you actually like money or do you just like do you want what money can provide and you have to paint that picture the convenience mm. the yeah. no stress and that's different for everybody, right? And yeah. everyone will be doing it for their own reasons. And that's why, you know, hence why you're trying to find out for people coming to those seminars, right? What is it that's going to actually drive you to take some action? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, if people want to find you, what's the best way to keep an eye on what you're doing and how you get to the next 50 deals that you're probably going to do? Um, well, yeah, I'm trying to picture and calculate when it hit 100. Uh, but yeah, at Thomas Singh is that. And then soon to become will be thomasingh.com which will be the main website that'll have a lot of stuff there, resources and the next seminar, which will definitely be August 5th on the Saturday, the Waipuna Hotel Centre in Mount Wellington. And that one there will be a good crazy one, yeah. How many people will you have at that seminar? I don't know. It's it's probably capped out to like five. There's Yeah, and there's also what we're actually going to be doing. Five people or 500? Uh, it could be up to 100. It. it could be up to 100 people. Nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you? we will be doing something like a webinar before that okay. as like a teaser, yeah. but that'll, that'll be announced soon. Yeah. Good on you. Okay. So Instagram, TikTok, and then website coming soon. Anything else? Facebook? Thomas Singh. Um, yeah. And Facebook as well. Yeah. I'm on the Thomas Singh property, I think it is, or just Thomas Singh. There's not any, there's no Thomas Singh in New Zealand besides me. <laughs> like it's literally a Maori name with a fucking Indian last name. <laughs> you know? That helps. Yeah, it yeah. does. You know? All right, mate. Well, thank you for taking us through a bit of your journey. Uh, and in the part two, which I'm sure people will be eager to get into, we'll dive into some of the tactics of how to go about putting these deals together uh, and also what you could be doing in this property space if this is the stuff that excites you. Absolutely. And uh, the closing off message, just goes back to your thing, is like many people message me, they're like, hey, man, I want to get into property. I want to earn this for my parents. And we came here as immigrants and blah, 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 and make this thing. I'm like, Awesome. My teachings will help you if you want to do it for that reason and make money, or you're just a money hungry person that just wants to buy a Lamborghini. The mm. training's the same. It's just here are the set rules. You learn this at the seminar, go off and make your money, do whatever you want with your own money. But I will just only teach you how to like make that money through property. Nice. But it's good that, because you know, the person that wants a Lamborghini, if he wants a Lamborghini more than that person wants to actually help their family, he will make the money. Mm. Don't throw family in there as like a, Oh, that's the ultimate motivator. Some people are like, eh, 
Yeah. Thank you. You got to remember that. Some yeah. people want the Lamborghini more. So whatever the hell they want, I don't care. It's not my business. But I'll just show you the vehicle of how to do that. There it is. 